So when I started my training in psychiatry, we were told that people who hear voices have schizophrenia or were going to get schizophrenia. And indeed, for people that have recurrent hallucinations or delusions, that is obviously the most uh, likely diagnosis. But then new data emerged that when you interviewed everyday people in the community who were otherwise well and asked them, have you ever heard a voice or have you ever had a strange belief, there's a small proportion of the general population that say, yes, that has happened to me. But they don't have a serious mental illness and they're not grossly impaired. So this has been a, quite a, an eye-opener for the research community. What, what's happening to these people? And originally we thought maybe these people were at increased risk of going on to get psychosis later on. And we thought we should follow these people and keep an eye on them. And indeed, that is the case. Birth cohorts have shown that if you have hallucinations at a particular age, you have an increased risk of having a psychotic disorder later in your life. And then new data came through that it wasn't only links to later psychosis, but also mood disorders and anxiety disorders. So the research community started to worry that maybe hallucinations were not tightly linked to psychosis, but were linked to other mental disorders, the, one, the more common mental disorders. So what we've done in this new study is that we've worked with Ron Kessler and a large group of uh, researchers on the World Mental Health Survey. This is uh, based at Harvard, but we use data based on interviews with 30,000 people. And we asked them whether they ever heard voices or saw things or had strange beliefs. And they had a detailed CIDI, a Composite International Diagnostic Instrument, that asked them about common mental disorders. And the really powerful thing about these data is we could date stamp when did you first start to hear voices, when did you see things, when did you have that depression, when did you have that anxiety disorders. So we could put the in a time-ordered fashion what came first? The first part of our paper, we looked at if people have hallucinations and delusions first, are they at increased risk of subsequent mental disorders? And as we expected, yes, and we found increased risk of major depression, bipolar disorder, bulimia, anxiety disorder. You'll see that in the figure in the paper. But then we, we did something novel. We, we turned the microscope around and we said, well, what happens if you have the mental disorder first? Are you at increased risk of having psychotic experiences, hallucinations, delusions, subsequently? And we were surprised to find that there was an increased risk of psychotic experiences associated with nearly every mental disorder we looked at. So all of the anxiety disorders, all the mood disorders, most of the impulse control disorders and the other disorders as well were linked with subsequent increased risk of, of psychotic experiences. So this is interesting. It allows us to reposition psychotic experiences within the epidemiological landscape. Certainly they are linked to psychotic disorders, but the evidence shows they are also linked to a whole range of other common mental disorders. So we need to think again as clinicians about what this means. Now our future research will drill down even deeper to see a whole range of risk factors that may cause hallucinations and mood disorders. And we'll try to pull apart those causal pathways. But I think for clinicians, we need to keep an open mind about asking people with anxiety disorders and mood disorders whether they hear voices and then take that into account. They don't need antipsychotics necessarily, but I think as clinicians we need to be aware of these symptoms.